This question is another sort of long paragraph from someone. Sure. So I'll read it out sure. and we can go back through it. Okay. I've used shaming methods to try to change the behaviour of my son and other people. Mm -hmm. And I'm beginning to realise how much my own suppressed or denied shame has impacted and still impacts on my actions and beliefs. Mm -hmm. For a long time, I've tried to change my behaviour and actually believed that I'd succeeded. <laughs> no shortage of arrogance and self-deception here. <laughs> I'm beginning to emotionally realise that it's not possible to change through trying to change my actions. Why do we find it so personally difficult to accept the truth and come to terms with our shame? I find this person's last question, like the last state, the last sentence, sentence yeah. quite incongruous with the rest of the question. Yeah. Because I find it's quite strange that she's asking that particular part of the question mm -hmm. when the reality is the real question needs to be asked about why she doesn't understand why she believes taking actions is going to ever cause any change. And that is the real question, not the question that she's actually asked. But let's look at the question she asked. So let's, let's list that question, just the last question. Okay. statement. Why do we find it so personally difficult to accept the truth and come to terms with our shame? Yes, so she's asking about shame and like yes I would like to answer a whole series of questions about shame later mm. I feel because there are a lot of uh, problems on the planet because we're unwilling to feel shame but that is not the reason why we damage others with our shame. Hmm. So perhaps and we this, could... And this is what we need to understand. Yeah. Just because we have an emotion in us of a certain type, it does not mean that that is the reason why we damage other people with the resistance or suppression of that emotion. We damage other people because we have chosen to damage them and we prefer it to feeling our own pain. So this question is not really about shame. It's about pain generally. The lady is unwilling to feel her own pain. Mm. As a result, she is willing to take actions that cause pain in others. So this is where in the beginning she's referring to shaming her son and other people. Correct. That's because she's unwilling to feel something inside of herself. Correct. She's unwilling to feel her own pain and so she creates pain in others. And like she said, she thought that she'd worked on the issue and overcome it but it's pretty obvious to her now that she has not. And this is great. Yep. This is great that now she realises she has not solved this particular problem. And she realises too, in the statement she made, she realises that changing your actions doesn't change anything because in the end even your actions don't change. Yes. So she has continued to shame others and shame her son in order to manipulate and control their behaviour. And she uses... In, in an internal justification for doing so. And what she needs to do is find what the internal justification is. And it's not shame. It's not shame that causes her to justify treating others in a shameful manner. Mm -hmm. it's, it's her desire to avoid her own pain and her desire to attack other people that causes her and manipulate, by the way, and control other people that causes her to use shame as a tool of control. So this is where we have to be very careful. See, what I see a lot of people doing is they say, look, the truth is the other day I yelled at my son or daughter. And then they say, that's because I was yelled at when I was a child. Or that's because I was treated badly when I was a child. Or that's because I felt bad, you know, I felt the emotion of, you know, a lack of worth when they spoke to me or whatever it is. No, it wasn't. It wasn't for any of those reasons. Yeah. It was because you decided to attack another person rather than feeling your own pain. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why you did it. You didn't do it for any other reason. You did it because you made a decision. You didn't want to feel your pain in that situation and you wanted them to feel pain instead. You wanted to attack them. That's why you attacked them. 
You wanted to shame them. You wanted to control them. You wanted to manipulate them. That's why you did it. You didn't do it because you have shame. You did it because you have justification of abusive behavior, which is a completely different emotion yeah. than shame. Yeah. And in fact, if you were truly shamed, you would never be able to justify it. If you truly felt some shame, you would never be able to justify attacking another person just so that you can avoid your own pain. Yeah, so you're saying that if, if we were truly in contact with our shame yes. and, and feeling it, not suppressing it, or at least sensitive to it from a feeling perspective, Correct. so when it's triggered we sense it, yeah. then we would never be able to, to shame another person in avoidance of that shame. No, I'm not saying that. Right. I am saying <laughs> that you could still, yeah. because you may have an internal justification of abusing another person, yeah. which is a completely different emotion. So can you clarify what you meant about if you were really feeling your shame? If I really feel my shame, I can still potentially abuse another person because it's not my shame that causes me to abuse another person. It's my willingness to cause pain in another person that causes me to abuse the other person. Yeah and in avoidance of my own pain, not my own shame. Does that make sense? It does. And this is where I feel a lot of people, they blame an emotion. They say, oh, it's because of shame that I did that to my son. No, it's not. It's not. If you, it's not because of shame that you do that to your son. It's because you're avoiding your own pain that you do that to your son, and you want him to feel as much pain as you have and you want to control him, and you want to manipulate him, and you want to tell him what to do, and you want to, you don't want to smack him because you have different, you know, you have other judgments about that, but you're totally willing to abuse him emotionally, which is abuse. Mm -hmm. You're willing to abuse another person because you want to avoid your own pain. And that's not about shame. That is about your willingness to abuse another person. Your willingness to take an unloving action to the extent that you're willing to harm someone else. Mm -hmm. And that is totally independent of how much shame you have. You could have a mountain of shame in you and never do that. Or you could have a smidge of shame in you and still do that. Yeah. It, it is completely independent of each other, these two emotions. The emotion of desiring to abuse another is completely independent of the emotion inside of yourself. Yeah. It, it's your justification Right? And this is where we've got to be very careful. What I'm saying is, this lady is justifying shame as the reason why she takes abusive behaviour towards her son and others. Mm -hmm. But it's not her shame that causes the abusive behaviour. It is her willingness to avoid her own pain and make herself feel better by abusing another that causes her to abuse another. And because shame is a technique that was used on her, she now knows the technique and she uses that as a technique mm -hmm. to harm another. Mm -hmm. But the reason why she's doing it is not because of her own shame, it's because of her own willingness to abuse another. Yeah. And this is where I see a lot of people getting way off board with their emotions. They believe that the emotion is one thing, when actually the emotion is quite a dark, much darker emotion in another direction that causes them to take a certain action. Yeah. And I feel that while we want to discuss shame, we also need to be careful of using shame as an excuse for very terrible decisions and behaviours that we make in avoidance of our own pain. Mm. And most people do this. Most people wish to avoid their own pain by attacking another, manipulating another, controlling another, so that they don't trigger them, as the saying goes, so they don't feel something from what the other person is doing. And that's all about personal avoidance of your own pain. That's all about your own selfishness and narcissism. It's not about your shame. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what we need to come to terms with. We need to come to terms with that just because we have an emotion in us from our childhood, that emotion is not the cause of us abusing other people and harming other people. That emotion is an excuse we often are using to abuse other people, but it is not the cause. 
The cause is an internal belief that we have the right to harm another people just because, or uh, as a method of avoiding our own pain. That's the cause. Mm. And that's a completely different emotional cause mm -hmm. than the internal shame the woman is experiencing. Mm. Mm. So, for, from what you're saying, that the reason we do harm to others is because we have an emotional justification of doing that harm. Mm -hmm. And often we justify it in order to avoid our own pain. Mm -hmm. But regardless of what that pain is, the emotion in play is a sense of justification or entitlement or that it's okay to do this harmful thing under this circumstance. Correct. And presumably all of us or people have different circumstances under which they would justify harm. Correct. It might differ between people. Yes. But whenever we do harm, we have that emotion and that's what needs to be dealt with. Yes. Yep. So if you gave the average mother a knife and said, murder your child, the average mother wouldn't do it. But if you get the average mother pregnant and she doesn't want the child, she is willing to do it. Yeah. So in other words, she has an internal justification under some circumstance that murder of a child is acceptable. Mm. Right? Now that is independent of the emotions that, we, that, that she feels when she feels that. Yeah. So in other words, when she feels like the reasons why, she will use a whole heap of tools of justification. And that is, I can't cope with uh, having the child. Well, have the child and give it away. Mm. You know, there's plenty of people who don't have children who want to have a child. Mm -hmm. give, it, give it to them <laughs> if you don't want to have it yourself. Yeah. You know, oh, but I couldn't do that because then I wouldn't be viewed as a bad mother. Well, feel that. Yeah. Feel that you're not a good mother yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you need to feel that. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't do it because, you know, the man I got pregnant to, I don't like him very much and he, this child will tie me to him the rest of their life. Okay, we'll take some responsibility of that and feel that. Yes. Feel that emotion of what it's going to be like tied to that man for the rest of your life, a reminder of one of your immoral acts yeah. for the rest of your life. Yeah. Feel what that feels like. But she, she doesn't want to feel any of those things. And instead, she's willing to justify the murder. Mm. And it's the justification of the unloving act, which is going to darken her soul, le more than the actual emotions in her that were there prior to yeah. the, the event. Yeah. So, you know, this is the problem that we face, is that quite often we say or want it to be reasonable mm -hmm. to do certain things. And it's never, so in this case, it's never reasonable to abuse your own children emotionally, physically, sexually, or any way, in any way. It's never reasonable. And yet most people do it yeah. in some way. Why do they do it? Because they don't want to feel their own pain. Yeah. And they feel they'd like to take their pain out on someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's very different than actually identifying the emotion of shame as the cause. Yes. So this is where I feel it's very important for a person to understand that. Yeah, I feel that's very important and it is the case not just with our children but anyone that we choose to harm. Correct. We obviously have a feeling that that is justified in that case. Yes. And that is what we need to deal with first, isn't it? Yes. We need to look at the internal justification for the unloving act. Mm. And, and we have amazing justifications for unloving acts. And a lot of our justifications, we believe, are reasonable. Yeah. We believe that they, that, that they, if we didn't believe it, we'd never do it. Mm -hmm. So we do believe they're reasonable. So the woman who aborts the child believes the justification for the abortion is reasonable. Well, even if you use that example of giving a mother a knife and saying to her, kill your, kill your, your child. child, and if you um, use a different example of giving a mother a knife and saying someone else wants to kill your child, she might, very, she might not ever feel justified in murdering her child, but she might feel justified in murdering, murdering the, other person. the other person. Exactly, who and is somebody's child. Who is somebody's <laughs> child, exactly. Yeah. Um, and society would also... Poss possibly justify it. Yeah, a lot in of fact, people in fact, would justify In many that. countries of the world, there's still the death penalty. So, of course, in every one of those countries, the, the majority of people justify it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so they justify, uh, from God's perspective, an unlawful act mm -hmm. in order to prevent them from feeling certain emotions. Yeah. That's yeah. all they're doing. Yeah. And this is something that we need to understand. We're just justifying things all the time. We're justifying unloving acts all the time. And we need to stop doing it mm. if we're ever going to change. We need to look at the reasons why we justify it. What fears drive these justifications? 
And shame is a causal emotion, it's not fear. Yeah. It's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the lady attacking her son emotionally by shaming him, and co to, which controls him and manipulates him, that is, that is an unloving act driven not by her shame, but by her fear. And it may be the fear of her shame or her oh, highly unlikely, fear I would of other pain, yes. mightn't it? Fear of other pain. And she's using shame as a, a convenient As a convenient scapegoat yep. to, to avoid the real feelings. Yep. But yep. regardless of what the real thing is we're avoiding, the thing to deal with is the fear of that thing. Correct. Yeah. And the only way you can deal with the fear of that thing is to deal with your rage of that thing and mm -hmm. the addictions of that thing, yeah. and then you'll get to your fear of that thing. Well, part, partly your addiction is feeling that it's okay to harm another when that emotion, when an emotion is triggered. Is that right? Well, I'd say that's the rage perspective. The rage. Yeah. yeah. So it's okay to harm someone when your addiction is not met. So. Yeah. Let's say a person has an addiction for safety. Yeah. When that addiction is not meant, in other words, they feel unsafe. Now they feel justified to murder somebody. Yeah. So, so you know, <laughs> in the case of a child uh, of a mother with an with an abortion, she's okay normally. She doesn't go around murdering people. But when her fear is triggered, and her, and her addiction is no longer going to be met, now she feels justified in murdering a child that's yet unborn. Yeah. Who has no control over the situation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And yet, if that child was born she would be convicted as a murderess and probably looked down upon by society for many, many years, mm. right? And yet when it's unborn, she has the justification that it's unborn, it's not a real child yet, I can get away with it, right? And these are all how, this is all how far we'll go in our justification. Yeah. We will murder in our justification. Yeah. The average person, the average person will murder in their justification. Yeah. And unless you're willing to release the causal emotional reason why that's the case, you will justify really bad behaviour that causes the degradation of your own and other people's soul. Mm. And some of that justification can be created just through the belief that I shouldn't have to feel fear. Yeah, I shouldn't and have to. I shouldn't have to feel fear. I shouldn't have to have some kind of inconvenience. Yeah. I shouldn't have to have some kind of discomfort. I shouldn't have to, like, and that's arrogance. Yes. That's also a lack of personal responsibility. So they're not shame-based emotions. They're different emotions mm -hmm. that are causing that action. Mm. So this is why, you know, I find this question quite interesting. And, uh, and, and here I'm not judging the woman. I'm just yeah. stating that this is... Uh, an illustration, it's a great illustration in fact, of how people want it to be one emotion that's causing their problem and even justifying that one emotion as the cause of their problem while at the same time not realising, no, there are much darker emotions driving this action that you're engaging in regularly than just this emotion of, you know, shame or whatever it is that yeah. they feel that is the main cause of problem. Mm. And, and this is where I don't agree with the average concepts of most uh, psychologists and psychiatrists and everything, that shame is the major cause of unloving behaviour. I don't agree with that. I, I, I do feel that it's, it, it is certainly a participant mm -hmm. in causes of unloving behaviour. And surely it's the avoidance of shame rather than the feeling of shame. Correct. Yeah. It is the avoidance of any painful emotion that causes unloving behaviour. Mm -hmm and we need to stop avoiding painful emotion, then we will not, you know, once we stop avoiding painful emotion, we will then not engage unloving behaviour so readily. Yeah. You know, we'll feel the unloving emotion instead. That's what we will do. We will feel the underlying emotion. And this is where we need to go so, as a society. We need to stop justifying behaviour through belief systems that is unloving and we need to start saying no behaviour that is unloving is justifiable mm -hmm. under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. And then we need to start looking at ourselves and saying, okay, internally I have feelings that they are justifiable. I need to get those feelings that are inside of me and work through my anger and my addictions and my fears associated with those feelings so that I no longer justify these unloving behaviours. And that is completely separate to our processing of shame. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. So I feel we will answer questions about shame later on, but I just wanted to address this feeling of using an emotion to uh, justify unloving behaviour and basically using an emotion as an excuse yeah. 
to justify a loving behaviour. And this is self-delusion. So it's interesting, in the statement or the question this lady asks, yeah. she's acknowledging that she has been in self-delusion and arrogance, yeah, yeah. but just not acknowledging how bad it goes, <laughs> how, how deeply it is rooted inside of her. It's yeah. so deeply rooted that she's willing to use uh, an emotion of harm to, to damage her own child mm -hmm. in order to control and manipulate his behaviour. Yeah. That's how strongly entrenched her belief is that she should be able to avoid her own pain mm. and, and her willingness to attack another person and make them feel as much pain as she feels. Yeah. And that, that, that is a very unloving course of action. And rather than her feeling all like guilty and punished about it now that I've said all these things, it would be far better for her to look at the reason why she feels she can justify this. Yeah, and look, I think this is such valuable um, information for all of us mm -hmm. because all of us at the moment are taking unloving actions and that's... Yeah. And we, justifying it. And justif Well, we have to be justifying it in order to do it. Exactly. And that's such an important dynamic to recognise and yeah. to not get caught up in this idea of throwaway comments like, oh, I did that because of my shame or because of, you know, I, that happened to me as a kid so I did it again, yeah. Yeah. you know. And it didn't happen. Like, the, uh, per, under those circumstances, every single sexual abuser would... Uh, every person who's been sexually abused would be a sexual abuser. And that's not the case. No. See, some of them are so angry that they feel justified to abuse another. Yeah. Some of them are not. Yeah. Some of them feel so hurt that they could never abuse another the same way. Yes. Uh, and see, it's a very, very different response. Yes. And, and the response is completely independent of what happened. Yeah. The response is based upon a justification that they should be able to take an action to damage another because that action was taken to damage them. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very different emotion that drives that. Yeah. Are, that's emotions of, you know, arrogance, lack of humility to your emotion, a desire to avoid your own pain, a desire to create as much pain in other people that you have inside of yourself and so forth. And they are quite dark emotions. And we need to acknowledge they exist inside of us and then look at the root causes of them, which mm. are all emotions that we need to experience and release. Mm. Mm. Great. Good Thank day. you. I think that'll be helpful for a lot of people, actually, that, that question and answer. Yeah, I feel so. Like I, I feel that a lot of people are using sort of emotional excuses for their behaviour. And, and there is no excuse for bad behaviour. No. From God's perspective, there is no excuse for bad behaviour at all. That's why every one of God's loving laws corrects bad behaviour for whatever reason you took it. Yes. And this is why every one of God's laws, there is a penalty upon your soul if you take an action that results in your being unloving to another person. There will be a penalty on your soul. And, and this is independent of how many things have happened to you. Yeah. Right? And so it should be. Yeah. Because you're making a decision to harm another purposefully and you shouldn't be. <laughs> if anything, you should, what you should be doing is feeling the own harm that was brought to you and never, never harm another because mm -hmm. of how much you were harmed. Yeah, yeah. You know, and a person who's truly loving would never wish to harm another person just because they themselves have been harmed in the past. Mm. And they would never even consider it as a justification, never. would they? Never. Because when we are developed in love, we take responsibility for all of our actions. Yes. Because that's how God views yes. us as well. And we see our actions as independent as what, to what happened to us. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that we see our taking an action to harm another as a decision we are now making to harm another. And it doesn't matter what excuse we use for that decision. The reality is we are taking a decision, making one to, to harm another. And that's what somebody did to harm us. Mm. And, and really, if we, if we think about it logically, we can see that somebody who did it to us obviously thought they had a justification at the time. Yeah. Right? And does it feel inside of you like there, should, there was any justification? No, it mm. does not. And this is how it feels from God's perspective. From God's perspective, there is no justification for any unloving behaviour. Yeah. None whatsoever. And if you are making justifications for unloving behaviour, you are already extremely out of harmony 
with God's laws of love and therefore you will receive the penalty of being such so, so much out of harmony. Mm. Mm. Yep. It's very, very damaging to believe that you have the right to harm another just because you have been harmed. Yeah. Even by that person. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. Great. Thank you. <laughs>